Right, hello, and yeah, sorry for a bit of a late start. There were some technical difficulties, but as you can see, they have now been sorted. So my name's Pete Cooper. I'm a lifelong naturalist, but I'm also a conservationist uh, working two jobs. Um, one of them is working for an organisation called the Derek Gow Consultancy, and we're a specialist in the reintroduction of native species. And one of those animals, which I'm going to talk to you today uh, in this uh, live session, thank you very much to uh, Lizzie Daly for allowing me to take part in this, is the wonderful harvest mouse. Now, for those of you unfamiliar with the harvest mouse, uh, this is Britain's smallest rodent. Uh, it weighs less uh, than a five pence piece. I mean, about sort of three to eight grams is what you're looking at for this animal. You know, really tiny indeed. Um, hopefully, you won't have to describe them too long because. Uh, we're in the video, I'm hoping to actually get to show you some real harvest mice. Uh, yes, I'm quite lucky to have some of those here with me today. Um, so we'll see how they're going to be doing. Now, the harvest mouse makes these extraordinary nests, uh, which is probably its most interesting feature apart from being so small. Mm. And I've actually got a couple of them right here. So in a nice little takeaway tub, these things are excellent storing all sorts, um, as anyone who's uh, kept a leftover this annual find. Uh, nests are also the perfect thing to have in these things. So these are actually made in two different plants. The two plants actually really commonly used by harvest mice. You've got purple moorgrass in here uh, and coxfoot grass there. And basically what the harvest mouse does is it finds a grass tussock which is really thick, really deep, which has lots of grass blades sticking very close together. Now that's the important thing because by having a grass stem that is really thick and clumped, it means that the harvest mouse can weave the nest around itself. This is absolutely amazing. What it does is it very gently makes some fine strips, um, weaving the grass, pulling it around itself. The ones immediately next to the harvest mouse form this lovely inner layer. So that's a little hole that sort of crawls through, and that's essentially the walls. Um, that keeps it nice and cozy. And then the outer layer are the thicker stems, and they're very flexible so they can squeeze and move with the mouse as it builds a nest and eventually settles in it. And because it's woven from the plant itself, it means the plants, the grass stems are still alive while the harvest mouse is using it, which keeps it nice and secure, it means you can't really find it. So if there's any weasels looking for food, then the nest keeps it nice and safe. Now the purpose of these nests um, to be so secure and flexible is for the mother harvest mouse to breed in them. And she can have up to an average sort of five to six babies, but sometimes litters as big as eight or 10 living inside this little nest. Uh, as these babies grow over the course of about two weeks, it's a very quick lifespan as you can imagine for such a small animal. The nest will bulge and move about with the, with the babies to the point that by the time they've all burst out of the nest, it's lost a lot of its strength and durability. And if the mother harvest mouse goes on to have another litter, which they often do because these are animals that can have you know, about oof, three to five litres in a good year, probably a bit more than that as well, she will go and make another nest. Um, she does actually go very far as well in her whole lifespan. You know, generally you can get harvest mice living within one field for the entirety of their lives if the habitat is good enough. But if they need to, these things can move very far and wide. And their ability to adapt, to cope in different habitats is part of the reason they are called mm -hmm. harvest mice. Now, you've got to bear in mind that Obviously, it's now called a harvest mouse, which suggests a link with farming, and indeed that is the case. But where did the harvest mouse live before there was farming? This is where the idea of the harvest mouse as a wetland species comes in. Um, you've got to think in the landscape about anyone cutting fields to grow crops or graze livestock, uh, there would be many more trees, much more woodland in the country. So where was all the grass, the big clumpy grass for the harvest mouse to live? And more often than not, that would have been in the floodplains, in the big wetlands, in the river valleys, which would still be nice and open. But these are places that would be very floody. They'd be changing quite dramatically at short notice. So the ability to move quickly and adapt uh, is what made the species um, a, a very bold animal in its own right. And you'll hopefully see that with the captive harvest mice I've got here today, in that they're much more approachable than you might suspect a wild animal. And while there's nothing necessary to prove it just yet, it is still a personal theory of mine, the fact that they are so bold and confident in captivity comes down to the idea that these were animals that were, had to be willing to move and be ready to colonize new vacant habitat as it became available uh, in small patches. But when we cut down the trees, we did make new meadows and pastures for cattle and you know, fields for crops as well. And for the harvest mouse, that was perfect. 
And that is where we come to the harvest mouse today as an animal of supposedly the harvest. Now, it was supposedly an animal of the harvest a long time ago, because nowadays our farming isn't quite so um, respectful to this animal, unfortunately. You see, we talked about the fact the harvest mouse needs these really thick, dense tussocks. Now, the way we farm today is very different to what we did back then, when actually, if you were sowing seeds for crops, you would just take a big bag and throw them out as you went. And that meant you had big uh, ricks of wheat and barley growing up together, lots of thick stems. Nowadays, we tend to farm mechanically, where we farm in one stem here, one stem there, big gaps in the middle. And that's not very conducive if you're a harvest master trying to build your nest. But that's not the only thing. We also cut far earlier than we used to. Uh, a harvest mouse can have litters generally up to about early autumn. But if you're cutting by late spring, early summer, then you know, you're wiping out uh, an entire potential harvest mouse population of what has a chance to settle. And you know, we farm much more intensively too. Combine harvesters are going to do a lot more damage than people cutting by hand did. So the days when people used to go into the barns and they'd actually carry back entire ricks of wheat with harvest mice still in them, um, but completely harmless to the mice, they would stay in the ricks in the barns over the winter and then move back out again in the summer. Those days long gone very sadly. And it's for that reason that many people believe the harvest mouse um, is now possibly threatened in the UK. Now, the reason I say possibly is because no one's really sure because harvest mice are notoriously difficult to actually look for. Um, one of the best ways to find them is these nests right here, because in the winter time, when they've actually left the breeding nest and they move down to the ground, they don't hibernate, but they do get less active and they do move under the grass and the leaves. These nests are left abandoned um, in the grass as it dies back over winter. And these are a really good way for us to know that there are harvest mice about. But there are limits to this because A, just because you find a few nests, say you find eight nests, that doesn't mean eight harvest mice because of course the mother builds several. And secondly, looking for nests is something that not a lot of people do. It's quite niche, to be honest. I mean, I'd be interested to know how many of you have heard of this technique or even harvest mice as species before I talked about them today. And there just isn't enough people looking in a wide enough area of the UK. So we don't know how badly the harvest mouse may have declined. Now, there have been efforts to look for this species. Uh, I myself uh, actually led a harvest mouse project in Devon um, two years ago during the harvest mouse survey season. Um, after I went on to do my current work, that project continued. And there's uh, another woman now called Sarah who's leading that project in Devon. Uh, and they are getting good records across Devon. And people have done it for, for Sussex and they've done it in Cheshire and Kent. So we are starting to get some pieces in the puzzle. And what we tend to see with harvest mice is what looks like a quite wide distribution all over the UK. And while that sounds good, it means they're quite widespread. Just because an animal is widespread does not mean it is common. What we are probably seeing is an animal that is far less abundant than it used to be, uh, which is now living in tiny patches or here in their habitat. Because you've got to remember, the, our farmland, our countryside as a whole, um, is much more intensive than it used to be. And wildlife really does struggle in some places to find a place to live. And if you're a harvest mouse, it needs big, wide, continuous cover of lots of dense, messy grassland, essentially. That's quite a tough thing to get. Where you do get lots of harvest mice, that tends to be in reed beds and big wetlands. Uh, and in something called colm grassland, which you get a lot of in the West Country, in Devon in particular. Um, but that is a very, very rare habitat. You know, the amount of land it covers is tiny. And likewise for the big reed bed wetlands as well. So where harvest mice tend to live is in these little corners of farm fields, little rough edges, little patches here and there. Um, I effectively, it's places that often look untidy to people and often fall um, foul of mowers. Um, so one of the big ways you can really help harvest mice, if you have got suitable land, if you have got harvest mice nearby, is just be a bit more relaxed in how you manage that land, you know, hold back a little bit. Now, obviously, not everyone wants the land to grow back into woodland, and indeed, harvest mice aren't wooden species, so you wouldn't really cope very well with that. But if you cut just a third of the lawn, uh, or the meadow, sorry, um, or you wait until September, October to do that, then that can help harvest mice big time rather than just cutting all of it much earlier in the year. Now, I spent all this time talking about harvest mice, but I think now's the time to see um, some real critters, and I'm very pleased to say that um, we've got some harvest mice who are still very active. So I'm just going to take the screen over here. If I open the doors, we'll see how that works. We have five harvest mice in here. So we've got five females. 
Uh, and these are descended from animals we have for the breeding program at work. So uh, we do have hundreds of harvest mice at our site in Devon. Uh, in fact, if I close the curtain, let's close the door so I don't get out. That might make them a bit easier to see. There we go. So these are effectively some surplus. Um, so we do keep some harvest mice by for education, uh, like I'm doing with you guys right now. Um, and as you can see, they're not running and hiding. Uh, they're very curious, very active. And that, as I said earlier, that is typical of a species. It's actually very confident around people. Um, and it's probably their biology. They have to be very confident in the whole. And what I'm going to try and do is see if you're going to entice any forward. It's mealworms. So these guys out in the wild, they do love to eat lots of seeds. They also eat fruit as well and vegetable matter. So I do give them. Uh, that kind of thing. They love mushrooms, peppers, um, broccoli, pepper, tomato. These are all some of the delicacies I like to enjoy here. But insects, they adore. And lots of people do keep harvest mice captive, but not many seem to feed um, protein matter. But it is a really big, important part of their diet, particularly if they're going into breeding uh, when the mother will need some protein to help her through. So you've got one just above my hand here. These guys are still quite shy. So these only moved in here about a month ago. Um, but once they get more settled, they do tend to be more confident taking mealworms. There we go, there's one here in the corner. Hello there, are you going to take a mealworm? Hmm? Just want to see what's going on, don't you? Yeah. But don't run out just yet, please. Now these things can get really addictive, um, as you can probably imagine. Uh, I could very easily sit back and watch these guys all day. So they're always up on the move, very curious about the surroundings. Anytime you put new stuff in, uh, they always want to see what's going on. And you can see how agile they are. So these are species that during the summer and the spring barely come from uh, down to the, or barely go down to the ground. They're very much a semi arboreal species. And that's helped by the fact they have this amazing tail, uh, which is prehensile. And that's quite special because these are the only mammals in Britain with prehensile tails, which means they can grip uh, the stems like a fifth arm. So there's mammals in South America, uh, the, a lot of the new world monkeys, the spider monkeys, woolly monkeys, um, the lesser anteaters, prehensile tail porcupine all have this feature too. But other tree climbing mammals in the UK, things like squirrels or dormice, they don't have these prehensile tails. They're agile, but they can't grip. But the harvest mouse can do that. And that really helps them live in this environment. They'd crawl through the grass and the stems. But we're not on any more worms today. Just like seeing what's going on. Very curious, aren't you? Yeah. Now we do have one uh, older female in these guys in the next door tank called Fatima. Uh, and she is a bit more happy about hand feeding, but she's a little bit lazy at the moment. And I think it'd be a bit unfair to wake her up, so we'll leave her be. But at least you've got a nice view of these guys. So that's your view of live harvest mice. Um, if you have any questions about uh, their, how you look after them, uh, I'm more than happy to help out on that front. Um, or indeed about what we do in the captive breeding program and reintroduction scheme. Um, so far, um, we've released about 200 harvest mice on a project in Exmoor. So last summer, uh, we went out to somewhere called the Honeycott State, where we've already released uh, quite a few waterfalls in the past. And this spring, we actually released a couple of beavers there as well. So they join quite a large cohort of wild rodents that we've been releasing back out there. Uh, what they've done at Honeycott is actually restore a lot of the habitat uh, the river meadows, the hedgerow edges, that kind of thing, which means that these animals can survive once more. Uh, and when it comes to protecting harvest mice in the UK, it's going to be a two-tier thing. In places where they already exist, it's going to be more of this kind of habitat management, which is a bit more backing off a bit, calming down the mowing, that sort of thing. Um, as I was talking about earlier, if you can uh, widen your field edges, if you can hold off cutting, and create more reed beds, create more rough grasslands, those guys would really appreciate it. Uh, and then the other part, as I mentioned, is the reintroduction. And 
where reintroduction needs to happen is generally in places which obviously you know, harvest mouse has been wiped out before through intensive agriculture, but even places where the numbers are, are there, but they're still very low and small, actually putting a few more animals in to help those genetics come back on up to the front again is a really important thing to do. And you're going to see that with a lot of species going forward into the future. Um, we have done an awful lot of damage to the natural world, and it is important that we do our bit to restore that, sometimes passively by holding back, but also actively by bringing back these lost plants, these lost animals as well. Now, as you can imagine, with a harvest mouse, it's relatively uncontroversial bringing these guys back. In fact, you know, these are a great way to engage people in the natural world we have in the UK. Um, I think when it comes to British wildlife, there's many people who still don't realise that it's much more than just the birds in your garden. The harvest mouse is something very few people will ever see in the wild. I mean, I've not seen them directly in the wild myself. I've only caught them in wild live traps. Uh, but then the idea of actually going out into a field and seeing a harvest mouse there, that's, that's never happened to me and very, very, very few people. But if you can see them, if you see the, you know, the ambassador animals, like the girls there, uh, and make that connection, that's a really important thing. So the harvest mouse is this gateway into a much wonderful, uh, more wild natural world that I think we all need. Um, so in terms of using the harvest mouse as a way to get landowners, farmers, communities to engage with the wider countryside uh, and actually see the value in nature, which you know, is, people like themselves have known to been there since they were kids, really, but uh, we need, really need to reach out to society on that. Then that's something that's really important. And I hope we can um, bring more of the magic of harvest mice uh, to people. I went off a little bit of a ramble there, um, but that really is, you know, the essence of it, I think. Um, no matter how small you are in nature, if you are a harvest mouse, you're just one part of a big system. Um, and every single part of it is important. Uh, the harvest mouse has its functional role in the sense that it's a small animal. It's going to be a lot of things eating it. Not great for the harvest mouse, but great for birds of prey, for weasels, small carnivores like that. Um, but, you know, it's wonderful in itself. It's this animal that builds its own nest. It's not trained to do that. Um, it does it all by instinct. Um, it can live entirely within the stalk system, which you see a very few small rodents of that ilk and calibre. And it's just a charming little creature. And if we can make more room for the species in our wider countryside, alongside a whole diversity of uh, animals and plants that we really are lacking in the UK, then all the better for it. So I hope you've enjoyed that live stream. Again, uh, if you have any more questions, then please do ask them. And thanks again to Lizzie for allowing me to do this. And stay safe, everyone. And yeah, enjoy the natural world as safely as you can. Thank you very much.